Okay, you guys can hear. I hope remotely, if not speak up. Yeah, good. Okay, so let me get started. So let me open up a word vector file. How many of you have downloaded and you know seen word vector file? I believe maybe people And it looks like this. You have a word. Let me just go jump. You have a word here, company, and this is the vector look like, right? There are a lot of bunch of numbers and so on. And I believe no one understands what it is. Right? We don't understand this. So now uh, it's not for us to understand, but uh, whether people only happy with this or people try to you know explain the dimensions. So let us see how to explain dimension and what we can do better there. And Professor said, asked two questions in the last class. One is, if Levy has proved, you know, that the SBD versus uh, the neural network, you know, what to make are so, you know, same almost, then why neural network is persistent? And the second one is how to handle WSD, Watson's design equation problem. So uh, the answer to the first one is relatively longer. Uh, I'll try to address that. The second one, I'll you know definitely talk today. So here we come. We talked about so many things: word vector, word to vague, and then how to evaluate. Now, human readable word vector, and what people tried there, and how we can you know, understand it from there. So the major work, uh, which is most uh, cited and you know well celebrated by this two gentlemen, basically the PhD student Manal, who is now in Google, and Chris Dyer from Carnegie. So they tried explaining word vector dimension. So the second paper is actually from Edward Hobby, different group from Carnegie Mellon again. So what they did, they said, okay, so let me take all the linguistic dimension, grammatical, okay, from the word name, let's say artifact, attribute, body, cognition, so on. And it has almost 44 dimensions. So let me take this 44 dimension try to explain word vector based on this 44 or 45 dimension, zero to person, so 45, okay? And if I can do that, then I know all these numbers are not kind of, you know, Hebrew to me. I understand what does it mean, and then I can do something better. Right? That was the philosophy. How? Uh, if you, uh, let me just go to the example first. If you have never seen a, you know, same stack corpus, it looked like this and pay attention here to understand how this process works. So let's say polysemous word, word like book. I have a book, I can book a ticket. Bank, bank. So this kind of polysemous word. So for example, look at books here. Okay. And what it has this you know, sense stack corpus, it has an ID. This ID is actually from word. Okay. So we say, okay, this particular sense is for that particular sense. Okay. If you don't understand still, I can still give you some idea. Let's just search for book. So book has these many senses, right? These are noun senses, these are verb senses. Every sense has a unique idea, right? Sense means there are different senses. There are polysemous words, right? Book and book. I book a ticket, I have a book. Okay, so it's for noun, these many senses exist. And for verb, these many senses exist. Now in the corpus, whatever I have been showing you, oh, come on, it every time goes to the basic. So, so here you can see there's a unique ID given here. So that means from the noun, it is the exact sense of this word. Okay. And this is actually a series of NLP called same core. It ran for more than 15 years. So same core has different corpus available. One, two, three, four. I believe till five, there it is. A big corpus. And mostly by Arvind Joshi and his PhD student who are then professor of various organizations and so on. 
So this is a very well developed corpus, developed by linguists, properly annotated, a lot of annotations, so everything. So you can trust on this. Okay, it's developed very properly. So what you have in the same core is you get a word which is particularly sense for this, and then you have other words as well. Also, they are you know marked with their senses and so on. Okay. So now you can go to word net and you know get the meaning. Very structured. Now what you can do? So the, do the you know simple distribution of semantics again. And try to see. Now go, let me go back. Okay. So how we define what to get context? Five right? Two plus, two minus. So if I do the same here, I take a word, look at two previous words, look at two next words, and try to formulate a context and try to design this vector. In my vicinity, how many this kind of word you know appear? And how many that kind of word appear? So I will get a count. I will do PMI, PPMI, normalization, blah, blah, whatever I'm supposed to do, I do. So now what I get, a word vector, if I take this out, it's a vector. So if I take this out, it's a vector, which is explainable to me, human, okay? I understand it means this, it, this means this, this means this, and so on. Am I clear in this construct? By word. Sorry? By word, individual word. Individual dimension of the vector. Because if you think about what to fake, you are getting 300 dimension. You don't know this dimension represents what. It's open. Yes, I, I understand that problem. I just mean that the unit of analysis here is the word. Yes. Yes. Now in this vector, you understand, right? Dimension. Very clear. This dimension represents this and so on. Human, explainable, understandable word vector. Now, ask me any question if you have. And they call it oracle vector. Okay. It has a dimension of 45. And this is something Thiluni did. Uh, we also are using this kind of thing in other research. So what we did, we did correlation analysis, okay? Because what happened in vector dimension or linguistic dimension, things are correlated. If there's a society and emotion, they are connected, right? For example, then weather and you know mood connected, shape and quantity connected. So there are multiple dimensions who are actually overlapping. So they have connections. And this is important to understand when do, you are doing vector space analysis because if you if you are simply doing Euclidean distance, it does not make sense because these two dimensions are connected. So you have to separate them off. How to separate them? That's a big question. Yeah. Where do those dimensions come from? Uh, from from the linguistic definition. Well, I know that, but I mean the that list. Where where is what is the origin of that list? <laughs> Okay. Is so, there a scholarly citation? There is empirical, right? That's uh, yeah, there are so citations. Uh, 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 lexical, uh, uh, grammatical uh, uh, construct. Okay. Yes, there are citations. So, word they developed by Felbaum, Palmer, Josh, Joshi for more than 40 years or so. There are lots of linguists work into that and so on. So, I believe it's, there are a lot of citations. I mean, not only one. It's, it has been developed for more than four decades or so. Over the period of time, community has found these uh, to cover everything in, you know, linguistic. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, but there might be other. I just, I'd like to know the origin. Exactly. Because, for example, Beth Levin has a very nice categorization scheme on verbs, and it traces to shame. And so, I just want to know the, the sort of the heritage. Yeah. So, so language. linguistically, uh, if, if you just talk about verb, right? So, linguistically, if you go by word net definition, there are six aspects actually control verb. Tense aspect modality, gender number percent. Now you can add more variation to it, but those are not linguistically supported. Those are cognitive things. Mm -hmm. But linguistically, these are the six parameters which control the form of verb in the language. So yeah. these are the linguistic definitions. What's your N? What's my? And not quantity. Yeah, so basically noun. N is basically noun, and quantity is the you know the cat subcategory of this. Yeah, so these are verb, you know, so basically N is noun. Again, four part of speech only you know, talked about, noun, verb, and verb. Others part of speech are not, you know, we are not discussing because those are very limited and, you know, and they do not contain any information. <laughs> they're, they're just skeletons. Okay, again, argument we can do, to be not to be is XPR, but that's a different, that's, a, that's an exception. So we don't have any prepositions and we don't have any pronouns in here. No. Sorry? Yes, verb and noun. Verb, noun, adjective, adverb. Four yeah. content words. Okay. Four kinds of content words. So, so these dimensions are taken from the 45. 
No, yes, are, yes, yes. These are different. These are different dimensions. From no, no, same different. Same. So, so dot 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 means it's abbreviated. And here also we take some some dimension to visualize. Because forty five was forty five looks similar. Okay, this is like a part of the structure. Yeah. Yes, so it's, it's just a part of the complete correlation. Are you good in the construct until then? I'm just looking at the proposition and. Okay, so my take on. Okay, so this is again developed from one data. If you change the data, this relation might change, right? Because the correlation. Yeah, correlation. Frame, framework. No, framework will remain the same, but the correlation number will change. But that's not the point. The point is, uh, so this dimension has relations. What exact relation that we don't know, but has relation. We cannot disagree on that point. Now the point is, if it is so understandable, human readable, why we are not sticking to this? Why? Sorry. Yeah, simple. You know, just go back to the corpus. Come on. Well, I, I would say the problem is the unit of analysis. No, I'm, I'm coming to that. Yeah. So let's say you take a, take this word convince, take previous two word and next two word for all the occurrences of this particular sense, not word, sense. You go by this idea and you see in the vicinity what kind of uh, those, uh, you know, 45 category occur. And then you keep, keep a count into this 45 category. You get a number. Then you do PMI, PPMI, log PMI, SVD, and blah, blah. So that's your construct. So it is exact match. Yes. So what's your output? It's going to be something like this sentence has a motion verb in it with an animal and. No, we are not going to sentence thought. level. We are trying to vectorify word. Yeah. But you said this is understandable. So what is the output? The output is vector. But the vector is going to say this is a verb of there's a verb of motion there's an animal here yeah so for example fish thinking. fish you see is a high number here in animal also 0.16 in food not in motion duck something good in motion food people because people don't eat that much duck chicken or something so some relatable you know component you can see in the vector space which you can relate, relate to I don't think so that makes sense according to that. No, that does not make complete sense. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, see, okay, so you are still, uh, first of all, this is not my research. I'm not <laughs> trying to justify yeah. it. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, okay, so so what you, you guys are stuck with the numbers. I'm not happy with the number. I'm, I'm saying you don't get happy with the number. That is not my point. I'm not trying to prove that. What I'm trying to, you know, make point is now you have dimension of the word vectors, which is understandable to human but hmm. how you get the number makes it understandable or not. Yes. So it's a again, you are talking about numbers. How you reach to this number? Whether you do count, uh, you know, smoothing, PMI, PPMI, how you are counting, all those questions. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm only saying that uh, uh, the method to populate the number hmm. is what makes it understandable. I mean, I mean, on the same page with you. Uh, but if the method is not good, then what should we do with the problem? Exactly. No disagreement on that. Agreement. So, but I'm not there. I'm mm -hmm. saying that. So, if you guys are stuck with these numbers. Again, numbers are not interpretable. How I'm populating number? We have a lot of questions. I know we can make it better. So, agree. These 45 dimensions are for specific for any domain. These are, you know, the kind of open. Open. open yeah you can you can create your own dimension for based on the domain based on the domain biology and whatever whatever you want to. so the question you asked was that why didn't people stick with this like why is the right, right so i'll go there but uh, it seems you are still not convinced so I, i'm you know spending time <laughs> but but the point is okay if you are not convinced with the numbers don't be okay there are a thousand different ways you can calculate the number so the point is now you are getting a word vector which is explainable to human eyes because you can't relate it to. But then why we are not doing this? What is the problem with this? So now the problem with this is then they said, okay. Uh, yep. 
I believe Bipula, you have to, you know, not to fear because you ask this question, why to project? And you never understand why to project. Now, what uh, Chris Dyer and Manal says, okay, I have now what to make, 300, 700 dimension, right? What I can do? I can project them to this 45 dimension. I make a projection algorithm, vector projection, okay? CCA, you know, other kind of thing. So basically CCA they invented or use, not invented, use, make it used for NLP purposes. So you have now 700 dimension, you make it to 45 dimension, okay? Now you do whatever analysis. Okay, so they also talked about another intrinsic evolution called, you know, QPEC and etc. I am not going to talk about that. So this paper has a lot of uh, basic innovation. Let's talk about this too. So the problem with this, the, we are happy, right? So now we have word factor, which is extendable, and we understand this, and so on. But we still don't do this. Why? Yeah, go ahead. It's not in your PhD. Yeah, so, so see, if you see today's projection, uh, literature, there are many algorithms. So linear is orthogonal projection, non-linear CCA, we have, we have different version of CCA, kernel and uh, non-linear, deep CCA. Now people are talking about geometric projection and so on. So there's a whole family of methods. Okay, we can keep talking about them. No, this, this projection is vector dimension projection. Because C, not. Projection is matching. Let's say, uh, let me just go back to the image. Now you have a vector which is 45 dimension, right? Now you have a different dimension uh, in the word to vector, 700 dimension. Now, which are the 700 dimension should map to the dimension one? Which are the dimension of that vector should get to dimension two? That is a projection problem. Is it like correlation between the it's not correlation, correlation. It's a projection problem. So it's, it's, a, it's a superset of that. So you have 700 dimensions of the vector. So basically now you have two vectors, but those are apple and orange, and not same. But if you have to get the 700 dimension vector, you have 45 dimension, how you will be mapping them? So that's the projection problem. It's like picking on some properties. Right. To map that. Right. So that is happening. You can do also increase it, right? You can try the reverse one. Try to fit 45 to 700 dimensions. But what are those properties on which it is projected? I'm not talking about, you know. Uh, so, okay. So if you talk about projection algorithm, projection mechanism, those are purely mathematical. Okay. So people did not, I mean, I don't care about how uh, you or human read the dimension. I only look at this distribution. I'll find out which dimension is connected to which dimension and I'll project that. Now you want to name those dimensions, whatever way you want. You want to name noun, verb, and verb, or you want to name X, Y, Z, you want to name something, you know, Russia, America, or something. I don't care. So the algorithm works to project them. You don't understand the Map them into 45 inch. Okay, mapping is one to one. <clears throat> Projection is not one. Why? Because as I said, these vector dimensions are also interconnected. So they are dependent. So now they are non linear. Okay. And when you have a higher dimension, you are projecting to higher dimension, doing kernel function, right? So it's not linear. So mapping is not right term projection. Understood? <clears throat> so you said that this is used, and, and now my question is used for what? Used for what? I'm, I'm coming to that. But let us understand the technique we understand. Okay, so people are <clears throat> point. So every time I object on this, right? So you Knowledge vector, applying some graph algorithm, and you get a you know neural uh, language model vector, and you just simply conquer it. That's absolutely not because <laughs> they are they are simply apple and orange. You cannot do that and expect something. Okay, so here is the here is the problem. What people don't understand. So today's neural network runs on uh, gradient descent. Now you put a different dimension vector. And it does not know those two vectors in the same dimension. It anyway optimized in your gradient descent. 
and it probably does not learn anything or learn something and you don't know what is happening in the in the cooking process you just throw all the masalas or the spice and you expect something you know miracle will happen but you don't know right you have no control so the point is your vector you have to respect this vector dimension you have to understand what they are containing what information they are bringing up they are supposed to yeah, so, 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 so the magic is happening in gradient descent. The magic is so whatever you put, it is learning based on that. But what if it's actually getting zero in those vectors? It's not learning anything. So you I don't know, right? Better, if, you, if you're saying that you can't concatenate apple and orange, you're right. It's fine. Right. So but even the apple that you had if you tell, uh -huh. it can get zero too. Right. So why what is the, what is the but you or... you have uh, ablations, right? Which is saying that I have a neural language model which is giving me X percent accuracy, and now I have another layer which is knowledge infused layer which is giving me X percent accuracy. So now it's a clear sign that your apple is not zero because otherwise you would have not get some numbers. Now it's quite possible that in your delta you are getting zero. Now the point is you don't know. What and, and, and the very important part is when you are not using so Joey actually did a lot of analysis on this point. When you are not using as any kind of graph neural network algorithm, which runs on the whole network, and then phase embedding, if you are using not to be a kind of you know sub graph embedding, every time you are regenerating embedding, those are again not apple and orange, those are apple one, apple two, apple three. Their dimensions are also different. So I believe we we as a team, we have a lot to contribute in this space. I don't see this discussion anywhere in this kind of work. So people are only, you know, very high level. People are not coming down to technique level. So anyway. I do not understand the question. Okay, so don't understand. Oh, that's a different uh, discussion. <laughs> you understand this one? Are, are you fine here? Until projection? Good. <clears throat> okay, so now, why we are still not using this? If it is so explainable and so understandable to human beings. Now, I'm trying to give some intuition. First of all, uh, these vectors are for computing purpose. Please understand. I mean, it's not you know human to read and you know get satisfied about the dimension. We need to compute using this vector. We need to produce an output for that. So what happened when you use a very high dimension vector like 700 or 1000 or so on? So what typically happened? This is some intuition from Andrew N. So say, let's say you are, you know, vectorifying, uh, you know, food items, let's say vegetable. And it, it is quite possible some dimensions actually talking about broccoli, some dimension actually talking about potato, carrot, you know, fruits, tomato, apple, banana, grape, and so on, and meats, pork, beef, and so on. So these dimensions are somehow distributed into some unknown distribution of the data, which you are not able to read as a number set, but that's the kind of distribution. And so I'm just, you know, this is my uh, you know, understanding working with NLP for many long days. So if you think about language, IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet is, is a set which is definite and concrete number. So how many sound we can produce? For example, if you go to any language, ma is a term for mother. That alphabet is there. Amma, mother, whatever language you pick up in the world that exists. Because that's the first term we can utter. So IPA is fixed. But unfortunately, in the language of the whole world, how many concepts we can talk about is not fixed. So how can you make word vector dimension fixed? Because that's a debatable term. And we, we will never come to a consensus worldwide if this is my finite dimension, which I want to, you know, represent my vector. And I also certified that. Done. Never going to happen. So what is uh, the problem? So, so, so the same visualization here, for example, if you visualize that, you will probably get this kind of thing. Like I have an interesting example. So then uh, on this pointer, a lot of people start discussing linguists, social linguistics, psycholinguistics, and so on. I used it because I like this visualization much. So this is a paper published in 2019. <clears throat> this says, hey, uh, don't get bothered about if you can't read this out. Because there were two, you know, school of, you know, uh, five in that time, what is it? 
encoding popularity. I can't still understand what you are encoding. You are giving me numbers, which is not, not understandable. W is probably. W is will come. So there are a lot of believers who start publishing. So this is one of the believers, social linguistic. They said, well, if you, it still makes sense. So if you, if you plot out your word vector, this is feminine, this is masculine, this is poor, and this is rich, and you try to talk about the sports available in the United States. And this is how it, it works. And this perfectly makes sense. So let's say camping, boxing, weightlifting, these are you know, typically, and these are for more rich people, golf, volleyball, tennis, and so on. And so they, they I mean, this is just one example in the, go to the paper and read more about this. So they said, uh, although it's not sometimes understandable by the numbers, but it still makes sense. And there are many papers which, which actually support what to fit of that time. So one more example is, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this hobbies paper. This is one of my favorite. And I come across, I learned this by myself. So if you look at word languages, so many languages has more number of word forms. So obviously, I, I really probably should also mention briefly about this. See, if you have a language which has lesser number of words, then the sense, you know, pressure will be high. In English, it has. You have around 18 to 20% word, which is polysemic. One word has to carry a lot of meaning. <laughs> but if you have a language, it is very concrete, and you have larger vocabulary, then the weight of carrying sentence will be lesser. Arabic is something of that sort. Very high vocabulary. Anyone who knows Arabic here? I, I think Naib should know. So what happens, so if, you, if you know Arabic, so Arabic has a very fine grain mention of time. You know, beginning of morning, after the lunch of your, you know, that hour, before the sunset, immediately after sunset, beginning, beginning of evening, before going to bed. So they have almost 40 words for time, specifically to mention. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, it's the beauty of the language. Now, it happens because Arabic has all those many words. Now, other languages don't have. Now, see, word, ha you know, word has a language has a connection with culture, right? For example, uh, let's say word shampoo. So, the Indian word got translated to English. Now, say English word. Now, the reverse. Let's say let's say Sahara. It's a Hindi word. I mean, we can translate this to English, but there is no equivalent to English. What chair and table? English word. But we have those into our, our languages. So sometimes borrowing and etc. happen, but not necessarily all the concepts are mapped. So what is the full set of world concept? Nobody knows. And we'll never be reaching there. So that's the point. So this is uh, actually why Arabic has that kind of thing, because they have uh, you know, uh, the prayer culture and they have specific times and etc. And that's why they you know, start doing that. That's become their practice. And so which is a beautiful thing. Now, so the point is, if you do Arabic word to vec, you might get this dimension somewhere in the vector space. And we are still not, don't know which the dimension remain. But don't get panicked about this thing. Okay, if you can find out someday, fantastic. If you don't, it's okay. Now let me talk about another paper, which is Edward Hobby. So Hobby also said, okay, fine. This is a big debate. Let me, you know, I mean, Hobby is a very well-known and well-celebrated NLP researcher. So let me come in, let me step in. Okay, so he said, okay, so this is my vectors, uh, globe vectors and so on, which is giving me this dimension initially. Okay, and some, you know, they also did manual annotation. Look at this dimension and manual. Can you try that again in English? Okay, yeah. So, so the, what did they do? They also manually annotate by putting people, okay, so sit down, tell me what this dimension is. So they did analysis this and that for many days, and then, okay, this dimension represents that, and so on. Then say, okay, then again, they do projection, and say so now, after projection, I'm getting dimension, which is more understandable, more cleaner. Okay, so they also, you know, talk about this. But see, all this practice did not last for long. For only for two years, all the debates are gone, because people are after numbers, accuracy. Because this method has been giving you better numbers. These are only to you know satisfy handful people who want to understand. And, but that did not last for a long time. So before I 
I mean, you can still go back and you know do something better on on those data and again prove that, that is a better way. Uh, before I jump into the next section, any uh, take a pause here. Any question? Point here. Yeah. Okay, so explainable word factor. So what happened? So when uh, I, I said that earlier, so see, Mikolov almost an outsider of energy world. I mean, if, if, if you go by the Harry Potter definition, he's a mother. He, he does not come from a very rich NLP, you know, lab. So while uh, what to bed has been getting success, still a lot of uh, controversies and criticism against it. Hey, your word vector are not, uh, you know, explainable. So now uh, the point is we can still make explainable dimension of word vector, but they are not as useful. At least not until this point, in uh, as as word vector, what is it? Or this neural method probably going to. So understand the dimensions. Are you good here? Then I'll jump to the next. So he's trying to fix the uh, dimension of what it is. Not fix, that's the wrong term. Uh, trying to explain the dimension of what it is. And to more understand about the dimension of vectors. That's very important. Because nowadays people just take two vectors and do whatever you know interesting thing they can do, but it's not the way you should do it. Uh, uh, No, no, it's not uh, incongruent. Uh, so what I'm saying that you don't know what the other vector is bringing up. We and don't need to know. Oh, we need to know. No, we need to know. Otherwise, it's actually open. But doctor, the, the way the network is going on right now, nobody is caring about it. No, I agree. I agree. I I I, I, I quoted one of my talk. Uh, the city. I quoted city of Alimpeti. He mentioned that. We are heading towards the AI world. Then you know, there nobody will understand how things are working, but we have all the solution there. Okay. Are you using by experience? So okay. So for example, uh, the emerging capabilities of language model, that, that is the way ChatGPT works. So it is giving you all the answers. Okay, fantastically. What? No, no. Uh, let, uh, 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 okay. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. You know, you know. <laughs> Propaganda <laughs> So don't don't take me off. What I'm saying is, see, when you start doing language modeling at that scale, it started showing a lot of you know interesting properties. And you were not able to, at least at this point, you were not able to uh, explain how this is working. But still it is working. I just saw the uh, people. People in his class was showing the stable distribution. He said that uh, he writes something that you know, the Egyptian god is making Krishna, the Indian god, okay? and it's generating some beautiful picture, which is something. Now uh, uh, the stable division being trained on layer data. It's a big, very big data. Uh, it's around thirty uh, yeah, of data. In uh, uh, now I'm quite sure in none of those data points you have seen that example. But it's still able to create it. How? That explanation is unknown. No. You have more questions? I'll answer this one. Yeah, you can do. I will ask you later. <laughs> like, I have. Uh, although we know that um, this particular entity is not present in the training data, so they don't really have an answer. The data is a little bit. Yes. The training data. Yeah. yeah. This time we will Even we don't really hear you in some Okay, I personally am not happy about the. No, no, nobody's nobody is happy. Nobody happy. No, no, no. See, see. 
even I if you remember the Pustak was giving job, I asked the same question. He he is a you know he's a, uh, uh, 25 years more senior to me in the NLP world and the whole NLP research. The same question shouldn't ask to ask why this is working. And honestly, I don't have any answer. But, but it is working. So we still don't know. We people are figuring out, and now the big poll is coming with one trillion. Am I right? One trillion currency. And nobody knows what one that it will be. But yeah, that's the point that they don't have a thing with they, they are they are companies, they don't care about money. They are selling this out and earning money. You want to add explainability and the research that you do. That's not my job. And then they will get money. That's not my That's not their job. Okay, to your question. So see, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the incongruity. So when I'm saying that we need to know apple and orange, when I'm you know merging these two vectors with the network language model vector and knowledge vector. So for you know these word vectors and the language word vectors, there's a persona of words uh, which you know which establish the so many clinical factors and so on. But when I see I might be wrong, when I see graph and value and what it contains in terms of information, I don't see any empirical proof. I believe we can contribute there because what it is bringing, I mean, you got a graph, which is fantastic. You just apply an algorithm and getting vector, right? What you are getting in terms of vector? Okay. I am not very convinced there. So, but why are we doing that? If it is working. Is it? If it is? Yeah. Why are we trying to work it? No, you have to understand whether, I mean, see, okay. So, let me, let me tell this this way. So one very fantastic this is got for one of our imaginative data. So we said we we got joint template and put two language models and using caption. So the question to reviewer scientists, I'm not convinced whether your joint captioning is better or the language model we put into for captioning that is doing the one. So you give me that, you know, uh, you know, appellation. So that's why I need to understand what. You know, you are putting in terms of vector from the graph that is, you know, good enough. You know, what is this thing in? If it is, if it is, okay, we are, we are big knowledge graph. So, so we can even propose another algorithm. Replace not to vex or replace NGN, we can propose a new algorithm. So that should be our, you know, core contribution. It sounds better? Yeah. Any question here? Uh, jump. Uh, jump. Good, we are having good debates. I, I, I like this. Okay. Next inevitable question. I will not take much time in, into this part. What is context? And who told us, like 10 commandments, uh, only five words is enough? Nobody told us, right? So, how to justify that, you know, assumption, presumption? So, I can talk about many words, but let me just stick to this word. Don't uh, get you know sidetracked by the meta embedding for the time. Forget about that. So what they did, they did very interesting. So no, no, I'm not convinced about the five. So they did 20 different kinds of contexts and created word embedding. So what are the contexts? I can take one word, I can take two words, five words, 10, 20, left five, right five, far distance five, and so on. So I can very different way. Do the context. What what to get population. And then I would you know compare how these methods are differing from each other. Context in which sense. Okay. So when you are doing what to get, you are looking at the previous two words, next two words as a context. In including this word, five words. This is your context, right? Now they said, okay, who says this is the only way to do? I can do different. Thousand different ways. Now, the other thousand different ways. People try. It. Am I am I clear enough here? So they did different twenty or you know thirty different kind of word vector based on the different kind of context, and then they compare. Okay. So one very interesting observation. Again, the man who I'm, I'm actually a fan of, Omer Levy, I, I should say that I'm a fan. So Levy write another paper around 2019. He said, hey, if you do 
convert uh, embedding based on the dependency parsing. Okay, so basically you got a word and then you do dependency parsing and look at who are the first character of that word in the sentence. So if you say, I don't like chocolate, don't is modifying like. So here, like is only, you know, hearing about the word tone. Chocolate has no effect. You can remove chocolate and put something else, it will be different sense. Okay, so you get a word, look at the dependency relations and take those words as only as context and develop what word embedding. That's the fantastic way. And it all plus of all your previous sort of. That's the tip. What was the right? I'm sorry, I was lost. You are lost where? Right? <laughs> no, after this, after this, you are after this, after this. After this, after this is uh, after this is I'm saying that instead of taking random context, uh, Levy says take the word, take the dependency relations of your nearby words, which are the first connector in the dependency relation. Take only those words and create a word vector. And the vector you get is much more richer and give you better performance in terms of you know uh, all the bouncing parts. Sounds good. You got you are not here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yes, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's obvious because if you're working on language processing, you know that you know uh, there are syntax dependent because there are modified, modified uh, relationships. There are a lot of dependency relationships in it if you're writing a longer sentence. So if you understand this word is only getting modified semantically by this dependent word, then you are only considering those words as context. Because if you are only looking at five window, you are many times get A and B and you know symbols and blah blah, which are nothing not making sense. Isn't similar to assuming there is a hierarchy in the I mean, there is some hierarchy structure and you're integrating the. Neighborhood knows like this. Uh, yes and no. This is simple linguistic theory. I mean, not 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 going to graph anywhere. But, but the dependencies are like yeah. graphing. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's not a graph. There's no cycle. There's generalization. Yeah, it's a spanning tree. Spanning. Yeah. So tree. But you're integrating graph context. No, no, no. Not, not so, so don't think that way at all. No, no, that's not the point. The point is when you are doing what to say by looking just vanilla five window, you are getting a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what Levy is saying, so don't do that. Run a dependency parser which would tell you which word is getting modified by which word is command. You, you only take the, those words. You learn a parser or you no, you use parser, sample parser. Just use sample dependency parser, get those things and done. But it's not the taking the phrase structure. No, no, no. Okay, so the point is, you can, uh, I mean, there are people, I, I, I don't have it. So we can do the same thing for phrases as well. So, what we are doing for word today, what's the word, we can still do it for phrases. Yeah, yeah, but you said, uh, I don't like chocolate. And you said that, that the don't is adjacent to the like right. and has nothing to do with the chocolate. Right. And if you did a, a structural decomposition of that, you would find the don't and the liking proximal and separate it into one branch relative to the chocolate. So you're taking into account not the adjacency of the words in the string, but the adjacency of the words in the, in the phrase structure. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so in that sense, you are taking into account graphical resources. Because because it's, it's a tree, okay, it's not a it doesn't have stuff going in the bottom of it, yeah. but you're still taking that graphical representation into account to determine uh, proximity. Okay. Uh, okay, if my answer is still, like, okay, if I do so, or not really do so, but yeah. then, uh, okay, so then what is- Well, I just, I mean, it, it is it is taking into account the graph. Okay. Okay. That's, so the, that's the, the comment. The, the thing that I'm trying to get at is that uh, you're uh, basically doing uh, give it, give it structure and then recover. Yeah. Okay. My answer to that is I have the answer. So, see, it has been done. Now, again, the question will be why people are still not using it. 
Okay. So, so the you know the argumentation in today's AI world is more data versus more you know uh, smart algorithm. What to pick up? And somehow, as a practice, no, you need to add more knowledge also. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so somehow people gone towards the uh, road of data. So people say, I, I mean, yeah, all fantastic, you know, to you know, give this sort of numbers and etc. Uh, for you know, what to take, I'll put in two billion more data. I, I, it would be much better. So people take that way. And although this is empirically somehow true, but people did not pick that out. And it is not in fact now. Because another another reason for that is because you are using a supervised way, which is dependency parse. And people, I mean, this is a philosophy of today's AI in the world is anything you introduce supervised, people will ask. So let's say uh, the cost, let's say Daniela was to say without any supervision in your context, you are getting 82%. Let's say for some time. Now you add the supervision and get let's say 89% accuracy, which is somehow better than your you know uh, P test and chi test. People say I, I don't care. Just, uh, yeah. uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but the point is point is it exists for certain data points which use kind of data. Okay. Now let's say Rachid wants to do something for his company for biological thing. Does not exist. Okay. If I want to do something for this, uh, you know, Hindi, does not exist. So the technique I am building up is not translatable to many languages. But it's better by six percent. What? Why not take the time yeah. to build it. But it's better by six percent for some some domain, some particular domain. So build the parser for another domain. Yeah, so that's a huge task. Sample person has been expected better. Than but a sample person has been built by over thirty years. And it takes a lot of efforts. It's not easy to build this person. I get that. It exists for certain language, certain domain, but it is not replicable as quickly. See, what to get is replicable in another domain in half an hour. Parcel is not replicable in half an hour. That this is sounding to me like hmm. I have a really bad algorithm, but I can do it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. See, again, don't don't take it that I am doing a phase. But I'm saying this is the this is how the you know the practice actually getting driven by. Okay. Okay. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm saying this is the way uh, the, you know the argumentation is going on. Okay. I still don't understand what this is used for. You said people aren't using this, and so in order to understand why it's not being used, I need to understand what you intend to use it for. If your okay. intention is to capture the meaning of an utterance, I have all kinds of complaints. If your intention is to represent something that can be computationally accessible in subsequent processing, that's another issue. So yeah, I have a proper, proper answer there. Okay. So, the, so by this time, when the paper is being written by Levy, that time he already declared the blue and it's already in use. So when he, when he says that if you use dependency parse relation, as to you know, incorporate into word vector, it performs for it in all the data. And he shows performance in all that includes part of speech tagging, chunking, sensible energy, dependency information, whatnot, patient data, all kind of stuff. And in all tasks, it you know get good performance. But the point is, people are still don't use it because that reason I our feeling. Because people are not happy with any any time you introduce supervision, people say no, I don't, I'm not using it. That's that's the way it is going. Okay. No, but uh, yeah. uh, using the dependency uh, for in this task, right? So mm. they will have a, a dynamic uh, window. Now. No, they don't care about window. You just pass it on to dependency parser. Mm. You get okay. This word is connected dependency relation wise connected to this this word, and you say this is my, you know, context flow, you know, constraint. Simple. Okay, but the number of words, the, the connection it, can it, be. It could be two sometimes, it's not five. For one word, it could be. Yeah, it could be two, it could be one. Other it can be five. Absolutely. Good, yes. So, what is the definition of context in word vector? Any question? Debate? Uh, we are getting more debate. That's fine. But then, if you, are, if you want to compare two words, right? Then, if the. Uh, but you are still getting the same vector dimension. Okay. 
So from right, we we can have the same same dimension. Right. Any more pointers? Yeah. Yeah. Not not the disposable no. context. Yeah, you, you, you can write another word. Nothing else? Okay. So I will not talk about this. I'll just make pointers. At the same time, okay, this algorithm started coming in, although Disney was present, but people refabricated it for the word vector visualization because so we had a lot of discussion debate in the community. We can't understand the dimension, can't visualize word vector. PCA is not enough, it's very shallow method, and so on. So people started you know, refactorizing Disney, and the, then the recent addition of UMAP, which come in picture, which can visualize your high dimensional you know, language vectors, like word vectors, sentence vectors, and you can visualize and understand, interpret. Right? So those things started coming in. OK, now, so the first man from the not muggle world of NLP, if you go by the Harry Potter definition. So the core NLP researcher who are well celebrated and well uh, you know, thought leaders uh, in the NLP community. So Manning is the first man who adopted word to pay in two years and write his paper, Globe. How much time do you have? We have half an hour, okay. So now let's see what Globe has. So what do we learn so far? Two families of word vectorization. One is count based, second is traditional based, word to base. Right? Learning parameter. So two families. What learning did? Very interestingly, mark these two paradigms. And that's called globe. Very interesting. Okay, how? I can jump this on. So what I said. You know, the count based method, which then for you know starts to praise VD and so on, and then the you know the prediction based method. Okay. So what do we learn? Now look at this. We presented this one last time, right? So you have words like human and user, machine and system, you have this vector dimension. Now, if I want to do similarity, I can do cosine, but the simple way is do a pointwise multiplication. Okay, something you know like this. VI transport DJ. If it is one, similar, zero, dissimilar. Simple. Do you understand that? Right? So if you do this, then human and user are similar word, you will get they're very close by. Machine and system are uh, close by. So what we learn, uh, so we have been you know in a the prediction based method. What we are trying to do. Given a you know p you know we are trying to predict p i given j, that's our conditional probability, right? So I can rewrite this this way x i j divided by the whole previous window a summation of that. So this is my equation. I can further you know normalize this if I'm applying the Markov chain model. I'm just looking at the previous one. So this is by x i. So this is nothing but if I'm trying to predict at the how many times add the appear in the whole corpus divided by how many times add appear? It's a branching factor. We are clear, clear here. So I can rewrite this this way. So what is basically my formulation is V i transport V j equal to this one. That I'm trying to do is the what to make right. I'm trying to predict the conditional probability. Right? I can rewrite that log function using this one log xi j minus log xi, right? Everybody understood? So if this is similar, I mean, if this is sim human is similar to user, reverse is also true. User is also similar to human. So we can we can write this to xi j equal to xi. Make sure we understand this. Because the next slide I'll I'll do it jump. Right. These two appear together. 
to see. But when I mean sir, do not appear with them. No, no, that's why. I mean, see, this example I take out from SBD example, you remember? That they never, they are actually mutually exclusive. <laughs> but before SBD, people were not able to find out the relation close by. After SBD, they find it out. I use that example here. But that has nothing to do here. This is just an example. This Make sure you understand this equation. Let's jump. So now what we can do? If B i j, if you remember, this one is equal to this one, right? Now let's say for the discussion. Okay, so this is actually a simplified version. You could have to read the paper, but I, I use the simplified version to make understand better. Now let's say this x i j is my what to fake method, prediction based probability. X i j is my found based probability, but still they are same. Yes, should be. I mean, I want to make a system where these two are same, should be same. That's my goal, right? I want to merge these two paradigm. So what I can do, I can simply write two formulation, V i j equal to log x i j minus x i, and V j i equal to log x i minus x i. So I can write two equations. I can simply merge them. What I'll get to this one, V i transport V j, to log x i minus log x i, Minus log x. We are good to handle this one. Right? So then basically, bi transport vj equal to this one. I just divide by two. Clear? The equation is clear. Very simple to understand. So then what I can write? I just rename this two as some parameter. Why parameter? Because I will introduce those parameters in my new Simple. So I said there's a bi and vj. And I, I write this one. So basically, if I want to merge these two paradigm, okay, Rana. So I have to make sure that this is true. Whatever I'm learning by prediction based mechanism and whatever I'm learning by found based mechanism. This statement has to be true. Everybody agrees until this point. Sorry? Does this support the practical point? Sorry? No, I, I'm still not there. What I'm saying is this. I get this probability from prediction based. I get this probability from count based. If I have to merge these two paradigms, if Levy's proof is right, this should be same. Right? And I'm just calculating based on that. And I want to achieve one system where this is true. How I do it? That's a different question. Exactly. That's why they are being presented this way, so that I can model it, convex function. You're right. Absolutely. But are you, I mean, it, it takes little time to digest. So are, are you still fine in this equation? If you learn that, then you learn globe. Then what? Simple. I want to achieve this. Then what I need to design? A loss function, which will make sure I'm achieving this one. I have to design the loss function that way, right? I'll do gradient descent in any way. So how I, I can design the loss, loss function? Simply by doing this. This minus log x i square, basically square root function of log x. And this is my loss function. And if I can optimize this in my prediction based method, then what I will achieve? The global optimization. That's why it's global. So the global optimization to the count based method. So Manning beautifully merged these two into the mainstream. The prediction based method and the count based method. So this is the function of flow. Yes, this is the function of flow. I, I'll take a pause here. Question clarification. Uh, someone else proved that uh, uh, 
they did not dispute that. They said, okay, if that is so, now I want to achieve a system which can make these two are true, true. count based method and relation based method. And let's merge these two. And basically, on, on the other political factor, Levy and Manning then write a lot of paper together. Can you find the situation of this idea again? Yeah, so this is intuition is very simple. What is saying that I have been doing count based method for word visualization. And uh, we learned that that has a lot of you know positive points, a lot to learn from that co location based thing. And now the new method, the new family, what is the scheme? And we have no idea how these are connected. But Levy says this is a logic function, it is achievable. Now, can we you know achieve something which is combination of both? And they have shown in their paper if you go by it. So, typically, they give the frog example, different families of frog, etc. But they have empirically shown probably I have the numbers. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers. Uh, if you go to the paper and you find the numbers, and they have shown how uh, the traditional SDD, CBAL, CIPRAM, etc., how Globe is performing it on given a lot of time. Yeah. What I supposed to teach here? No. I I'll, I should wrap up today, right? Something like that. Uh, yeah, I think she uh, at the end of this class, I think it's worth it. Thank you. Okay. So uh, then I'll I'll not uh, go deeper. Um. So I just give a high level idea. You you go by that. Uh, derivations. So uh, negative family. So when uh, what to fake being uh, born? So the uh, and people have been trying to train this on a six billion data points. So the problem was optimize the derivation because every time you are calculating what? Every time you are calculating six billion probabilities. Every you know forward and backward pass. So that was impossible to calculate. So what you know very interestingly. Cleverly, people put the idea, Mikolov did the idea, it's called negative sample. So instead of learning it over, you just introduce some noise and you actually convert this is coming fast. So how that happened, that is negative sampling. I typically teach and then how it works and how it affects uh, the computation time. Uh, so basically, yeah, so how how it comes down to some very minimal number of computations. So let's not go there. Okay, so let me touch very uh, briefly these two points, then I'll be done. This is the question you asked yesterday. What's in this application? So another, so what to fake has been actually being proved one, one step at a time, you know? Also does this, also does this, also does this. Last pointer was what's in this application? And the major criticism was you are getting only one word vector for, for a given word. We're not getting multiple vectors. Then how will you handle word sense? Bank versus bank and you know, book versus book. So if you look at words and disambiguation before neural network era, so this is how people used to do it. You got a sentence, you got a polysemous word, which is uh, let's say bank. Then you want to disambiguate that by looking at the context. Yeah. Polysemous word means one word has multiple meanings. So bank is one example, book is another example. So that's it. So now here bank is not river bank, it's an organization bank. So I need to understand that. Okay. So this is the WST problem. And it's a, it's a very well studied problem in the Indian economy. Right? So before uh, what to fake bond, what people did, they said, okay, take the word, look at the context. Now, how to look at the context? There are a lot of research, okay? And people did PhDs on this, okay? For example, Mitesh, uh, I believe I, I talked to you regarding Mitesh. So Mitesh is same, same age or same age time we did the PhD. Mitesh PhD was on WST, right? So people, you know, studied on WST. So you take a word, 
look at the context and try to disambiguate which sense it is from the world data. And there are corpus. I, I show you the same corpus. Right? So people did a lot of work on WST project. Now, when you get what to fake, we don't know how to handle this situation. You have multiple senses and you are getting only one vector. Now, the magic happens. The elbow come in picture. Elmo brought into a lot of new things. Although if you look today, because I, I get this question from one of my students, I'm, I'm just repeating the answer because you might start in the same. If I look at Elmo paper today and see the jump into the numbers, it's not high. Then why it is, you know, it's a paper got 5,000 citations. What is new about it? It's very really hard to assess today because that time Elmo introduced a lot of new things. And what are the new things? I'll, I'll you know, just briefly mention. So what Elmo says that what, what is, you know, simple problem solving we can do? Then we can create separate embedding for the separate senses, right? Bank, organization, separate embedding. Bank, river bank, separate embedding. Now, if we can do that, the problem is when you get a sentence, it's a search problem. Which one will pay? We don't know. So can you do better and simple? Okay, so what they said, okay, I got a stable static embedding of a word from what to where. Now I get a sentence, I look at the context, I will change the angle of the vector. Okay, and the new representation I got is contextual and representing that sense. You got the intuition, hypothesis, that's the idea, right? So what they did, did very simple thing. And this is the first time got introduced. So until that point, people have been doing language modeling from only one day. They said, no, that's not enough. Because to disambiguate words, I mean, you have to look at the WH research before that. So to disambiguate words, sometimes those contextual words actually sit far apart, not exactly the context. So I will do what? I also do right to left. So I will take two representations of the sentence in the language model, left to right and right to left, and we must have it. It will give me what? More information. Right? And I will be able to distinguish the word senses. How? Come on. What is that? Why is it not visible? Yep. So here is the basic formulation, okay? So you have a probability of TK, which is a word, looking at the left context until one to TK minus one, you have the word and the right context, TK plus one to the end of the um, uh, sentence. And you, you then calculate this tooth. Basically uh, the plus is being put here, is plus not plus. Basically you're margin this tooth probability in some way. What is the way I'll come there? Then they said, okay, they introduced two layer of LSTM at that time. LSTM was, what was popular. I don't know whether you don't know about LSTM today. Okay, so LSTM and bio LSTM was popular. RNA neither. This is RNA, not transformer. So they introduced two layer of LSTM. Layer one and layer two. Okay, so what is happening exactly here? You give the word, define the window size. They define six, actually. Define the window size, and you change by averaging the weight of this particular word by looking at the sound. Okay, you do it one time at the, this layer, another time in the layer two with bidirectionality. So this is the setup. Are we all agree with this setup? Any question on the setup? What's setup? Okay, deep end. Okay. That section is open. Just keep it hold there. Okay. 
I'll, I'll come there. But we are just just performing LSTM here. So basically, instead of RNN, we just replace RNN with LSTM. We are you know looking at this uh, doing the nonlinearity. No, this way nonlinearity. I'm going down. So I am just kind of doing the context based window word uh, vector you know modification in the layer one and layer two. Clear setup. So that's why you say it's like when they do this using Facebook, then no, they are doing language modeling. Not, not they are, they are uh, they're not solving word embedding problem. They said, I'm doing language modeling. So I take those word embedding. Now I formulate a language modeling problem, and this is my setup. So I'm asking why you said old neural architecture in particular, so just reorient your focus on it. No, I, I don't get your question. The uh, existing or the architecture. Okay. Is, why so, is it that insufficient to read? Oh, insufficient. That's the wrong word. So I said the other alternative is you can create, you know, for a polysemous word like that, you can create two embeddings. Right? You can change. So actually, I talk about this and I, I, I need that. So what you can do? Okay. So you take the same core kind of data. You say, okay, this is a polysemous word. I take in one instance, I take band organization, I remove all the other bands. Now I create embedding. Right? You will get embedding for that particular sense. Then you save that. But the problem is in application, when you get a word, which embedding will pick? Because you have 10 senses and you don't know who to put the pick. So what these guys are saying, giving a mechanism. Without being into those search problem complexity problem, you can use it on the fly. Understand this? Hold on your question. I, I believe you'll be able to understand. So this is the language model setup they said. And that did a magic. What magic? This okay. If I take the embedding out from the layer one and layer two, and if I do that process, what I exactly said, you go to corpus, you get a polysemous word, you take one sense, remove all the other senses. Get an embedding and do repeat for all the words. And then you compare your layer one representation of that particular word and layer two representation of the particular word in the Elmo architecture. And you see there's a huge match. So that's basically is giving you the same thing, same effect. You are able to solve the WST problem in the context. Is it a better sound? No, I understand what the problem they're trying to solve. Hmm. I don't understand why they need this to architecture. Okay. So if you say, no, you can still, you know, count to this paper and write another one. But if you say, no, this is not needed, then what is the alternative? At this time, Stigram hmm. existed. Right. So Stigram, if you give a central word, it can get it context. Right. So if, if you want to reorient this word according to its surrounding context, then why don't you just use Stigram? Yeah, so you are not understanding the problem. Let's say that this is my same one. All right. Right? You will get grand times two. This is my table. Now, whatever thing that I am doing, see graph. Right? I want to change the whatever. And I create a better one, which can get the same one. So I don't want to change it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll give it. Now let's say I do this. I take a corpus. I take only this sentence, mm -hmm. apply what to it. I got embedding for sense one. I got, you know, whatever modified, embedding for sense two. Okay. Right? I have two, two embedding now. Now when I got a content where somehow the empty is present, I am not sure what to take. Writing in separate sentences. Otherwise, this is just the first sentence. If I don't separate out, I might get a word which is quite co-located for reverse. I might get, uh, for this case, I will get organization. If I don't separate out, it will be misleading. And you have your question. Yeah, let's say there are only two sentences in the whole world for bank. 
Okay. Okay. So you have skipped your model. Right. It says, let's say this is bank. Uh -huh. This is sense one. This right. is bank. Right. Sense two. Loan separate the person. Uh -huh. Takes the same person. Uh -huh. If you route it through this way and predict this context, pull out this entity. If uh -huh. you route it through this way and pull, predict this context, pull out this entity. Why do you need the LST analysis? Like, uh, okay, so uh, how do you know in uh, dynamically this is what what uh, sense it is? You can you know the activity. How? What do you mean? How? In 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 a neural network set, you have to decide if somewhere right? if this is this case of action. Who will decide? No, you should decide. Just okay. add layers. So you have different grants for different senses. How 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 many that you know? How, how, are we, how are we deciding how many errors to insert this? Okay. How many words are there for this maybe? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm saying what is the deficiency this asking. No, no, no. My, I'm not able to understand that. See, so, so there are two kinds of uh, WH problem. Mm -hmm. One is same class, one is cross class. Okay, so book is, let's say I book, take it, I book, I have book. Now no cross problem. More complex problem because your context are very, very different. But now, no problem. Very right problem. Uh, maybe it's not a light example, but similar example to them. So, same class problem, now, no problem. So, those are relatively easier. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, the number of uh, polysemy, how many senses it could, could exist, it's not definite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be 20, sometimes it could be 2. So, how will you decide this number of layers? So, uh, then how do you decide this is simple. I'm saying that I have number of words. Okay, I'm not doing anything extra. I have I get a sentence. I have a polysemous. So I just pass it on its RNN architecture. I just pass the words. Okay. So instead of RNN, I'm doing an esteem. And I have this add and normalization kind of thing. And I have another layer here. Simple. Yeah, so in, in this people have added number of words or for sentence. Okay, so that is dynamic, right? So for some words. You have multiple senses. I mean, you don't know. Yes. So, like so then that supervision comes in, right? Okay. So you get a word, right? You go to WordNet and find out for this polysemous word how many senses it is. And you add that many layers. No, no. That's okay. over senses. Okay. In a course, so okay. right now, okay. how do you decide the context? You take max sequences. Right. Do the same. Okay. You so that is also happening here, Max. Max yes, I understand it's happening here. Mm -hmm. Why could that happen, this happen there? Well? But I, I don't understand that. So uh, you are predicting the surrounding context given bank. No. No, in this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Huh. So you uh, have uh, that the same architecture that is predicting context equal to max sequence length. You will get multiple predictions for no. different no, 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 no. of the I, I understand why you, you come from. No. There's a static word vector only in that from a pretty large context, okay, from six billion data points. And you cannot do that on the fly, which is the offline process. People calculated, pre calculated word volume embedding and stored it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's there. Now you take that static embedding. Now you are trying to see, given this context, how that will be seen. Yes. Perfect. You, you have the capability hmm. to reorient this context based on surrounding words right. in, in, in the picture matrix. Right. So why do you need a new aspect? No, you don't have that capability. You, you have why that, that's what I'm not getting. Why well, whoever you? wants to go to class this for class we might continue. So just uh, hold on, I'll I'll come back to like, finishing up. So Elmo introduced the bidirectionality and uh, the WST problem got solved. And also, I wanted to talk about this one. Uh, it also solved the uh, entity reserve equation problem. So there are, you know, for example, Leonid Messi and Messi are basically the same entity. How can I understand that? And also got solved. And there are, you know, beautiful paper about that. Mm -hmm. So I believe I will stop here. Whoever wants to go to class, go and let us take this discussion. Um, general uh, schedule is that uh, I guess. Uh, we have today's Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, right? Thursday. Thursday. So next week uh, there will be two classes. I will try to finish the rest of the PhD, uh, you know, uh, uh, work. Then the week after that, uh, a whole bunch of us will be traveling. Actually, 
we have no key there in the server. Uh, so uh, we will go on for a week. Uh, 